you on live? Yep. All right, so we, uh, this is our most recent swarm box here. Last week the bees took off, I think from that hive, possibly that hive, but started a new box here and uh, that was a couple days ago. So I'm just gonna check this out to see if the bees are still in here after I shook them down into the new box. All right, we got a new colony form. As long as that queen, as long as the queen is in there, which this is probably a good sign because they're nice and nice and full. Can really hear them in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They can kind of hum. I sprayed some of these frames with sugar water just to get the bees to take to them. I don't know if that, I thought I read that somewhere. But it looks like we got most of them in there. If I could find the queen, that would be really sweet. How will you find her? Will she be big and big and fat? Yes. Yep. Usually the queen is like maybe like two or three times the size with a real long slender abdomen and a little bit different color. The clustering on the bottom, that's interesting. Yeah, they are loud, which sometimes when you hear a loud colony, that means they're queenless, that the queen's not in there. So I believe in that case, if uh, there's no queen, it would take them some time to create their new queen um, and then start a, a new colony for building brood, eggs, foraging. Actually, here's, oh, I think I see her. So there's a lot of worker bees, and then here's the queen right here. This is great. Here's the queen. See her? Yeah. Interesting. Some of the drones are also really big as well, but I'm pretty sure that is the queen. Sometimes she's lighter in color. Some wax buildup in there, it looks like. Yeah, so there's, and then we can also look for eggs, which I, this is nectar down here which they forage for the nectar. And then if, if we see little tiny dots, like grains of rice, but much smaller, those are eggs, which would be a good sign, meaning she's uh, building the next generation of bees. It's, I, I think that's the queen, that's gotta be. Sometimes she's real light colored though. It could just be a big ass drone. <laughs> Pretty sweet that they're called drones. Yeah, and, the, yep, and those are the males for mating. That's all they do is mate. With the one queen. Yep. She lays, I think the queen lays like one to one to 2,000 or over that eggs a day. She lays wow. a lot of eggs. So these are good. So we got three empty frames. At least five empty frames. So they'll just hopefully keep building uh, out. To me, it looks pretty good. I've ordered a new uh, inside cover, which just gives them a little ventilation, so I still need to get that on there. And this just keeps some of the uh, uh, rodents away if any of the raccoons tried to get in here, which they did on that hive, but they didn't knock it over. We were fortunate they moved the cinder block but and knocked over some sugar water, but did not get to the bees. That's good. Month and a half ago. A little fuel in here. So this just uh, kind of keeps the bees at bay, calms them down a little bit, and it pushes them. The smoke pushes the bees down into uh, into the brood boxes. So the brood boxes are on the bottom. And the supers are on the top mm -hmm. and the supers we call them Illinois supers are the honey that we get to take if they make enough and then the brood boxes are just for them to uh, keep laying eggs and then eat as well because they feed on some of the, the nectar and the, the honey 
Mm -hmm. So maybe we can uh, maybe take a check at this one. So it's uh, mid-July, and uh, by now the, they call it the honey flow is starting to improve. So with a lot of the pollinating plants, you really get that nectar because um, they've been bringing back pollen for since early spring now, mid-spring. And uh, the bees are this, on the move. Yeah. So hopefully we don't get stung. Uh, <laughs> smoke really helps with that. So stay near the smoke. Sometimes gloves. Um, sometimes gloves make it a little cumbersome to take the frames out. Is the only reason why I'm not wearing gloves today. But I'm also not wearing gloves today. And when I go in just to kind of check. Um, see how the supers are doing it's I try to do it as quickly as I can it doesn't disrupt them much I do not have my hive tool today oh this is good though a lot of nectar and then what they do is they'll eventually cap that mm -hmm. um, and then in cure it's cured cured honey then so it seems to be doing seems to be doing pretty well will these bees learn the more that they're handled, the more they can um, be trained, I guess, or are they just going to sting sting you forever? <laughs> sting forever? <laughs> or yeah, well, they, I mean, obviously they're wild down. bees, they don't want to be touched, or if you're doing this more often, does that help? Oh, I see. Uh, it's kind of like... Because they're the same swarms, right? Right, and any time you go in here, I feel like, you know, you're taking the roof off their their home, but um, they can handle this, so they can tolerate, you know, checking it. It's really when you start to... Uh, Try to swat at them or something. Yeah, disrupt their egg laying, and the queen's yeah. egg laying down in the deeper boxes. I, I don't think they like that as much, but this doesn't really harm them too much. They seem to be doing okay. Uh, so this was our one of our first first boxes. Get a little warm out here. <laughs> it's about 87 degrees outside. Yeah, nice and warm today. But that's good because then when it's hot out, they just more of the bees are out foraging, so they're out and about. Holy shit! It Oops. gives us a little uh, gives us a little time to get in and, and check the colony. So this box is the box that Charlie helped me with uh, a couple weeks ago. Charlie came up and looked at the the swarm that I had put into the box the week prior and uh, he confirmed that the colony is doing pretty well and I agree with him. There seems to be quite a bit of action going on in this box. So this was one of the colonies that swarmed put them in a new, a new home. So we retrieved the queen and most of the workers. This would probably be a good one to see. Nice fat one. Yeah, it's heavy. Here we go. This is great. So this is a frame with plenty of brood on it, which is the eggs. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the queen. Check this out. That's a queen right there on the top left corner. You see the abdomen is real big. Ah, uh, like <laughs> I, I can't point to it, but set it down. Right there. Oh, okay. Yep. Got her. And then the uh, the middle is brood, so that's the egg laying, and then the top of this frame is capped white honey. So this stuff here is delicious. Delicious. Yeah, you can go. You can, go you can dig in. And they'll clean that up. They go in and uh, once I recap that. Mmm, very sweet. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, that tastes good. Premium. It almost tastes like minty. 
Can you change the flavor of the honey by messing with the bees? Uh, most of that has to do with just what they're what they're uh, foraging for, yeah. foraging on. So, with many different types of plants, I think a lot of people would market that honey if they're selling it as like a wildflower mix, maybe. Okay. So this seems to be doing pretty good, and they'll slowly. Actually, I want to check in the frame. So there's two, two frames on the end that are not drawn out yet. Yeah. Empty. So I don't know, maybe in a week or so, they might make their way over to these ones. And there's one empty one that I had moved over. Sometimes what the bees do is they'll work in the middle and then leave the outside ones. Mm -hmm. So I ended up moving one of the middle ones to the outside to try to force them to. Sure. Hoping that'll work. More accurate. So maybe in a, a week or so that'll be ready to uh, harvest for honey extraction. Have you harvested anything yet? Nope, nothing yet. Looking forward to it though. A little warm out. <laughs> <laughs> Recently rototilled and to try to knock down the weeds and we'd like to get some clover seed down here in the middle if we can rake some of this up and get it cleaned up. Clover seed would be great because the bees like the blooms, which right about now a lot of the clover is blooming. So that would be good, it's just getting it all cleared out. And got the seed, just need to get it down. quicker than pine needles. Pine needles. Seems to be okay. Yeah, we can check. So we're up here, we might as well check them all, I guess. Why not? Just Keep pushing my luck. You get a little smoke up in there. And just to cook. Calm them down a little bit. So I think this was one of the colonies that swarmed, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. and yeah, wasn't not, it stuck to one of these pine trees here? Yeah, the, you can kind of see where I took the swarm out of that arbor vitae right there. Yeah. So cut a big cut branch and <laughs> shake them down in a new box. So this looks like it's pretty slow. There's not a whole lot going on up here. And this time of year, I think the bees should be starting to fill up the supers. So they probably swarmed from this colony. Mm. Let's see what's going on in the brood box below it. There's still bees here. They just get set back. We just set them way back. Yeah, there's lots of bees down there. It's got some work to do. Well, yeah, and they have to, if they lost their queen, they have to create a new queen. And it takes her, if she starts laying eggs, 21 days from the laying of the eggs until they hatch. Mm -hmm. So that's 21 days of setback. Until you get a new batch of foraging bees. So we'll say that's one. So wait, th they've they have swarmed out of this box. Some, most of them. Oh, I think a big okay. portion of these bees swarmed, and then the ones that stayed, if I'm not mistaken, uh, probably slowly rebuild their their colony. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Especially you know, first year checking all this out. That one's a little this. Fourth or fifth and final colony. It's a little weak as well. 
well. So that feeling he's swarmed as well. Probably our last, most recent swarm. Sometimes when it rains a lot, it's kind of the opposite of good weather, but sometimes when it rains and the bees are kept in the hive, uh, I've researched and read that sometimes when it rains a lot, they just... They're stuck there? Stuck and there's too much going on, so they take off and hmm. abscond from their home. Get cabin fever. Yeah. Which I think uh, definitely could have happened. These supers should be starting to fill up by now. There's nothing going on. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Ten. Sometimes I thought I'd put nine frames in one of these, but it's, ten. it's kind of a shame. I was hoping these would be starting to fill up. And this is kind of like the other one. That we just looked at. So there's a lot going on. There's lots of bees in here, but they probably just got set back when the queen took off and the half half the colony took off. I don't have my hive tools, so this is really hard to take apart, pry apart. That's all honey in there. I mean, that's all capped honey hmm. on the tops, and then the bottom is brood. So eggs and brood and honey together is what they feed on. Just like to take get one of them out of there. Damn. Pocket knife. It's not the proper way to do this. And they have a substance that they excrete called uh, propolis, which like glues the hive, the hive together, makes mm -hmm. it difficult to work with, but in the winter time that helps keep them warm and it's like cement. So I might not mess with that one anymore. Maybe it'll See be how that might get ugly if you yanked one out of there. Yeah. And I'm not for certain, but they might, uh, this might be like a fall crop, so if they continue to build, maybe in fall they'll end up filling these you know, later in like late summer or fall. Hopefully. That's their inner cover that I need to get on that one. I think we looked at all of them. Yeah, I think so. I would say from productivity First swarm's probably doing the best. Then maybe the very first colony that we looked at to start with, second best. We'll monitor our most recent swarm. And then these are the two that uh, they took off from, absconded. So they're set back. And I was trying to determine what, which ones were doing what, but on a sunny day it's easier to read the colonies, I think, than a cloudy day because they're out and about on a sunny day, so you can get in and work with the hive. Right. First time, the first year doing this, you learn a lot. I've been learning a lot with this, so. And I gotta put the smoke out. Yeah, so hopefully we get some honey out of that. And maybe that one, and then maybe these later in the season. This thing cool down. Thanks for taking video, Block. Yep. Hopefully it turns out because I've been wearing sunglasses and I haven't been able to see a thing the whole time. So <laughs> I asked Laura to 